Good morning to you all here from the north of Norway, event 13 of uh, season 12 of Visma Ski Classics here at the start of 50 kilometers. You look at it in that sense, you go, hey, that's not the longest uh, course that we have out here, but it's the most difficult. Those two climbs are definitely the steepest one in the whole Pro Tour. I'm looking forward to see both the men and the women struggling up there. Yeah, you're looking forward to it. I bet they're not. There it is. This race dedicated actually to the memory of a, a Norwegian military legend, Colonel Ole Reistad. For the first time in three years, we are back with what we call here in Visma Ski Classics, pure Arctic madness. This is the hardest course on the whole tour. Extremely steep, extremely challenging. And this morning here with snow falling is going to be some test uh, for them as the elite women begin here. The big considerations here. Do you double pole? Do you go with kick wax? Many of these, uh, these gears, both men and women have been focusing on the double pulling for, for so many years. So they haven't been doing any diagonal practice at all. Valuable points for Alnis here as she tries to move into second uh, overall. She's 10 points behind Astrid Orislin. There is a little bit of a battle going on here for the points. She's up here with uh, Lena Korsgren here who's trying to get the points to Team Ramadan and they just come through and it is Alnis there who's got the maximum points. Three different local sports clubs cooperating together with the Norwegian army to stage this event, the Rysted Loppet. Tradition here, it will be that tank that fires off the uh, beginning of the men's race. There it is. The drama and the tradition in the stunning mountain fjord landscapes of northern Norway. A course which runs through forests and across mountains uh, between the start here in Setemoen in the municipality of Bardu and right across to the finish line at uh, Bardufoss in the uh, municipality of uh, Mulselv. The women has, uh, they have entered the, the first climb here now, and it's nice to see that Ebba is, uh, she's eager to, to set a high pace already from the, from the start there. Looks like uh, the others are struggling a little bit to, to keep up with her. It's just interesting, isn't it, as well, just to see, um, see diagonal stride technique. Yeah, absolutely. This is the only race, I think, where we see the best skiers uh, use this technique. You can see Stian's uh, intentions are quite clear here. He's going at it really hard here from early on. This is a big priority for him. I like that. Ruffles out the green sprint bib, suggesting, yeah, it's mine. And it could well be now. We're back with the women here and Ebba Anderson's uh, breakaway attempt here, uh, which has happened on the first hill. Are we going to call it that yet? Looks to be putting a bit into this on the way up to uh, Orta, which is the high point of the whole course. We're talking about diagonal striding technique. Uh, it just looks beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Just have a moment to appreciate it, Simon. It isn't snowing that much anymore. And uh, it doesn't mm. look like it's uh, so much snow in the tracks neither. Advice. Uh, she's skiing really, really well here. She just looks in control, in command, on what is an extremely tough course. But you see the difference from someone who's doing it all the time. It's so comfortable. We come back to that word again. And Eva Anderson here is giving a demonstration right now. It's uh, she's coming through here towards the high point of the course, towards Orta, and she's going to get those uh, climb competition points. There's no need to look back right now. No one's anywhere near her as she's going to come through to the high point of the course, just over 14 kilometers in. And it is uh, Eva Anderson here of the Lager 157 ski team through there in a little under an hour. Just that image of white in the background. There's nothing there at the moment. She's done so well here up the climb. Oh, here they come now. Astrid Oris Lynn, she strides away through here to the high point of the course at Orta. Marit Bjorgen through for third position with Team Rag the charge there. So there's some two minutes back there. Martin Lustrum Nienget, the current leader now. And they are in the midst of their climb up towards Orta at the moment. And Andrew Musgrave, they're all striding. It's a huge advantage for them to have the kick wax. The guys double pulling, they need to watch out so they don't glide too much on their skis when they're doing the herring bones. They need to focus on that as well. They have to almost just walk up the climbs. This is, uh, this is tough conditions uh, to double pull. Nice to see Todoshle here in the lead together with Martin. 
We also know from the last part of the season that uh, Martin Lozerny is in, in great shape. Beautiful technique of uh, Tord here with Nienget. I think Tord here, he shows that, uh, I don't know the, the expression in English, but uh, you know, old circus horses, they don't forget their tricks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write that one down. <laughs> I think he really appreciates a race like this, where he's able to, you know, to wax his, uh, his skis again and, you know, to use the diagonal technique. Torlesh Liadal, and it's very important for him because he holds the climb bit, the lumberjack bit. This is a, a good result for him here as he does come through here at Orta Liadal and to take the maximum 30 points for himself and team, his team, Team Expo and Fuel of Norway. Team Exohus is uh, Nien get through just a second behind for uh, 23 points. Johannes Eklöf there I think has got those, but it's a damaging first climb there for Eklöf who was already trailing by 31 points. First six gears all use kick wax there. What will be interesting to see if um, some of the double pullers in the, in the men's race are able to close the gap to Durashla and, and Martin in this part of the race. Gives them a chance to come back. It definitely looks good for, for Ebba. Still has a minute down to Austria and Marit. Yeah, it was a minute and 43, wasn't it, not too long ago. So she is still comfortably leading the race, uh, Ebba Anderson at the moment. A minute and a half over Marit Björgen and uh, Astrid Oris Lind. It's really Björgen here is the only one who uh, you feel at this stage can uh, get back at Anderson. But at the moment, that lead is growing. The lead here is well over two minutes now, towards two and a half minutes it's going to be here. Björgen here through for a second place overall for Team Rag the Charge. It could be that uh, Astrid Oris Lind has wrapped up the, uh, the climb bib here. We'll see where Britta can come through there. We have uh, Martin Lustrum, the Enget here, who is leading the men's race right now. You can see from the way he's skiing how steep it is, how small steps he's using to stay in the tracks there. It looks so easy. Through for the maximum of 30 points, Nien Get leading the race through to Halver Hill, the second climb competition of the morning here at the Reistad Lopit for himself and uh, Team Exohus. Uh, and uh, Tord Ashley Adalin, who of course leads the climb competition, coming uh, through here for the point. Opportunity here to well and truly wrap it up, which he's going to do. That climb bib, we only have the two climbs left next weekend at Ulis Levy. This will be enough overall. Mikael Gunnarsson, former winner of the race, but just ahead of him, Andrew Musgrave for Team Neringsbanken. Seaman, who, who are these? Whoa. Uh, not my friends. <laughs> the lead's come down. It's come down a little bit. You feel it's too late. For Marit Björgen here, though, it was up to about two minutes. It has come down a little bit in these uh, downhills where Björgen is just just cut the gap a little bit on uh, Anderson down there from two minutes down, we believe, down to about a minute and a half. But isn't she going to run out a little bit of time here? There's still a lot to make up there, even if she's trying to make the push here now in the downhill section here, six and a half to go. And she's kind of run out of track, perhaps, Seaman here, or can she pull it off? Yeah, yeah I think it's, it's too late. Even for her. Eber Anderson can add her name to the history of the race because it's been so smooth from Eba Anderson, the Swedish standout, as she coasts through to the line here in Bardefoss. I think she's proven that she was, uh, she definitely was the, the strongest skier here today and uh, winning by some 50 seconds over another legend, Marit Bergen. Not able to keep that winning run together, but uh, well, her shape is still incredible and it's going to be another podium. A third place to add to that for Astrid Oris Lind. The pure Arctic madness of the Reisted Loppet. The final results then, as I say, 54.2 seconds clear. Anderson of Lager 157 ski team ahead of Team Rack the Charge is Marit Björgen. Astrid Oris Lim, winner of the last three races. In third place this time for Team Koteng Eidesen. Uh, the first double polar coming through. Britta Johansson Norgren back in eighth position. Martin Lurstrom, the Enget here, who looks back and he can look back some more because there's no one with him <laughs> right now here. What a feeling this must be to be all on your own on the move down towards uh, Bardufoss. And now a big moment for him in his uh, relatively still young career. Oh, there we go. Grandstand finish here in Bardufoss as he wins the Rysted Loppet. I add on here. He shows some sign of uh, old standards coming in second here. Mikael Gunnarsson here coming through to the line in uh, Bardufoss to complete the podium in the men's race.
final results. Mikhail Gunnarsson with third position ahead. Uh, Tordash Liedalen and Martin Lustrem, the Inget, winning his uh, first Vismiski Classic stage.